Hey guys, welcome to the programming section of the tutorial. Uh, these next four videos are completely optional. So all the code that we're going to be writing here has already been implemented in the main repository. Uh, these videos are primarily meant for beginners and people who are new to OpenCV. Um, so if you do not know what image masking is, if you don't know how to work within different color channels of an image, um, or maybe you want to learn how to create a custom image augmenter with polygons, that's what all of these videos are going to be going over. So we're going to be creating our target matrices for binary classification, uh, multi-classification, and we'll also show how to create the HSV image um, to draw very specific colors for each of our multi-classification channels. So if that sounds like something you want to get into, and it'll be helpful for you, then definitely follow along with the next four videos. So let's start by creating uh, a kernel for our Jupyter Notebook. So in order to utilize our Anaconda environment that we created before, um, we need to create a kernel for that environment. And the way we would do that is we say ipython kernel install user name and then I usually make the name identical to the name of the anaconda environment so you would hit enter and hopefully see something like this that it created a kernel um, in this location on your computer and now um, let's launch a Jupyter notebook so if you're on Windows this would be a space if you're on Ubuntu it's a hyphen and what if you've never used a Jupyter notebook before it is a way to put Markdown in between your uh, Python code. So uh, if you noticed, we launched from the semantic shapes directory here, and it's got all those files in there. That's exactly what we're seeing over here when we're in the Jupyter Notebook. So these are all our files. And you can create a new notebook by coming up here, and you can just pick one of these kernels that have been created. All right? but I already have one created. Um, and if I open this up, so pause the video and make sure that you copy this down or you can go into the GitHub and just copy and paste these uh, two functions or these two code blocks um, and make sure that you have that set up. Uh, you also wanna to switch to your kernel. So you can go to kernel, change kernel, and then you can switch between all of these. Um, so I'll be using shapes. Now, in order to execute all the code and have all the variables start to store within your kernel, you could do uh, shift enter. So if I just come up here, I do shift enter, shift enter, both of those ran and now we can access the plot pair uh, function later on in the notebook, all right? So I think we're gonna start by just creating our binary masks. So I'm gonna come down here and you can switch this into markdown like this. So now this is a markdown block and we'll just say, uh, I don't know, create binary masks. All right, shift enter to go to the next one. Um, so let's start by, so we've got all of our images in our directory and we have their corresponding annotations in the other directory. Um, let's first start by just creating to list, to list all of those files. So I'm gonna start by saying image list is equal to uh, sorted of OS lister of images. And when you do sorted, you can also pass a key. And we're gonna to wanna to sort with a lambda function here. So we're gonna say the lambda of x is gonna to equal to um, the integer of x dot split. And we're gonna split on a period. And we'll return the the first element of that split. So um, essentially what we're doing is we're saying, let me see if I can grab it really quick. Okay, so then semantic shapes, we've got images, we have all of these things. We wanna split on this dot JPEG extension and we wanna cast the string into an integer and then sort based on the integer values, all right? And that'll make sure that everything's ascending and equal, all right? And so annotation list is gonna be created the exact same way. We can actually just copy and paste this. And we can just change this to annotated. I'm gonna run that. 
good. I have a syntax error. Oh, I put an extra X in there. There we go. All right. So now we have an image list and we have an annotation list. Actually, let's just print that just to show you guys. That's what your list should look like. So now let's start iterating through that list. So I'm gonna say uh, for image file name and annotation file name in the zip of my image list and my annotation list, I can now access my individual file names. And the first thing we're gonna do is we wanna read in our image that we're interested in. So in OpenCV, we do cv2.imread and you would read, uh, because they're in the image directory, we have to do os.path.join of images, and we would join that with image file name. Okay, and the last flag here is to indicate the uh, how we would like to load that image. So I wanna load it as a grayscale, meaning that the image will have one color channel, and it's just gonna be, uh, a pixel that falls between 0 and 255 okay so uh, in computer vision or just images a 0 is going to be a black pixel and a 255 will be a white pixel okay um, if you were to change this to a 1 that would be an RGB and it would have three channels um, but we are only interested in having grayscale for the binary masks all right so um, now let's do uh, let's read in our annotation image so that we can grab the, the corresponding shape dictionary, or I guess the list of shape dictionaries, all right? So we're going to say annotation path is equal to uh, os.path.join of annotated. I want to grab an fn. And now we can actually grab our shape dictionaries. So the shape dictionaries is, remember, it's going to be a list of dictionaries, really. Um, so we're going to create a function called get poly. So let's actually go over to Atom. And so this is what our annotation file looked like, right? What we are really interested in is grabbing the values, which is a list, corresponding to the key shapes, all right? And that's all we want to do. We want to read in the annotation file and grab that information. So let's go ahead and do that now. Oh, and when we do this, we want to pass just the annotation path, right? So I'm going to come up here. And if you click on um, this, this cell, you can go to insert. And you can insert a cell below that. And we can just start by saying get. Uh, def get poly and that takes again our annotation path so now what we want to do is we're going to say with open and we want to open up from that annotation path as handle and we would do something like data is equal to json dot load handle and we could say shape dix is equal to data of shapes. So data is a dictionary in this case. So we can access the values corresponding to the shapes key. And then we've got all our information that we want. So we'll just return shape dix. Okay. And let's actually make sure that that's working before I move on. I'm going to put a break in here because I don't want to iterate through all, all like 200 files and I'll just print shape dicks and there you go. It's a list of dictionaries. Uh, we've got our label and then we've got our polygon in points. All right. So that is our annotation information. And what we want to do is take our annotation information and draw it on top of our, our grayscale well, I guess not on top of the grayscale image, but we want to draw on top of a, a black image. Okay, so within machine learning, like to show you guys, if you look here, this is what a sigmoid looks like. It is an activation function that will have an output that's squashed between 0 and 1. 
So when we want to estimate the probability of the class of a pixel and we're doing binary classification, we really only need the sigmoid function. Um, for multi-classification, we do something called the softmax, uh, which is, uh, it's taking sigmoid, but it's like projecting it onto multi-classes. Um, so if you know like the probability that it's gonna be sunny tomorrow is like 0.7, you also know that there's a 0.3 probability that it's not gonna be sunny. And that's really what we're capturing um, with a sigmoid activation at the output of a neural network. Um, so with that in mind, what we'll need to do is create a another function and we'll say def create binary masks. So we'll create a function that takes in our image and it will take in our shape dicks. And what we really want is a background that is black all right so we're going to start by creating a blank image it's going to be an, an image of zeros so we'll say numpy.zeros and the shape of this is going to be uh, m dot shape of zero m dot shape of one and the data type is going to be equal to numpy float 32 this is very important um, for tensorflow it's usually best to create the data type as a float 32 here, all right? Because this is actually creating the matrix that we're gonna be using uh, as the target matrix later on, all right? So we're gonna say for shape in shape dicks, uh, I want to grab the points. So the points are gonna be equal to a NumPy array uh, from shape and we want to access points. So this is taking the the points that were down here and we just want to access those um, but we we're actually we can't just pull them out we need to cast them into a numpy array and set the data type as uh, numpy in 32. This is very important because um, usually with OpenCV many of the data types that it's expecting are going to be uh, some kind of like they want a clear integer but they also want it to be 32 like most of the stuff is not 64 it's usually 32 so um, if this is actually if you don't do this you'll get all kinds of errors and OpenCV will not let you uh, draw a polygon on the image so uh, the way you would do that is we can use uh, CB2 fill poly and what we're going to do is pass it our blank image, and we also want to pass it our points. We need to enclose that within a list. And we want to, like, what, what pixel color do we want to fill um, our polygon with? Well, we fill it with white, 255. Um, and so that will actually create a binary mask that is going to be able to be predicted by that sigmoid. Now, in practice, you would actually take the uh, you would take blank and you would divide by 255.0 to make sure that's squashed between 0 and 1 but I didn't really do it here because I want to actually plot the image or I, I guess plot it yeah and so here you would just return blank uh, so if you come down here and we have our shape dick so we're gonna just call create binary masks and we're going to pass it our image which is grayscale and then we pass it our shape dictionary and I think oh yeah that'll return how did I do this okay I called it in binary so that'll return our binary image that we draw drew on and from up here we created a plot pair function so I didn't really talk about this, but this is just creating a subplot with one row and two columns, and then it is just allowing me to plot two images side by side. So I'm gonna call it plot pair. So plot pair should take our image and it should take in binary, and we can set the, the color channel. So the color map, for matplotlib by default is like some kind of RGB color map. 
Um, we can set it explicitly to gray here. And we can do plt.show. And there you go. So we've got our original image that we read in up here with OpenCV. And then we took a blank image right here. This is where we created a blank. And then we drew a polygon in place over uh, the memory of blank, all right? And then we just returned it. And that's what you're seeing here. You're seeing uh, a background, which is gonna be implicitly defined as black. And then the, the shapes or objects of interest here are gonna be in white. And so uh, the shape of that, like if you wanted to see, you could print uh, in binary dot shape. Uh, that is, uh, well actually, I guess you could do, so there's another thing you could do where you can do, I don't know, TMP equals in binary, uh, numpy dot expand dims. Yeah, so you can expand the dimension. So something that happens with numpy is it will cut off the last dimension of that grayscale image where implicitly we actually know that if we were to expand our dimension in the second axis, and then we were to print, I don't know, tmp.shape, you notice that it adds on that extra channel. So, and this is actually very important for when you work with neural networks, you you would probably get an error if you tried to pass something that was just like a 256 by 256 as a target matrix. Uh, creating that extra one for the color channel for a conf net is very important. So you'll see me use like expand dims and squeeze and stuff like that to manipulate uh, array shapes throughout like really all the code if you were to read into it. Um, but I just want to explain that for those who are like confused about why sometimes I use expand dims um, in, in the data generator. So uh, that's how you create binary masks, and in the next video, we'll start to create the multi-classification masks, all right?